How to get a baseball ready for a game. Prep a baseball for play the way the pros do, by getting it dirty. You will need mud, baseballs, and an umpire. Step 1. Find some mud. The pros use Lena Blackburn baseball rubbing mud that is procured from a secret location along the Delaware River in New Jersey. Step 2. Get a lot of baseballs. Before each major league game, between 15 and 18 dozen balls are rubbed down for use in gameplay. Step 3. Dab some mud onto the ball and rub it in until the shine is gone from the ball. Umpires used to be the only people allowed to prep the baseballs, but the task is now relegated to clubhouse personnel. Step 4. Have the umpire inspect the balls. According to official major league rules, the umpire shall inspect the baseballs and ensure they are regulation baseballs and that they are properly rubbed so that the gloss is removed. Step 5. Play ball. If you're a pitcher, you'll keep rubbing the baseballs between pitches so that they stay soft and more responsive to your grips and pitches. Did you know? On average, each baseball in a major league game lasts only five to six pitches before it is hit into foul territory or smacked out of the park. How to pitch underhand. Pitching underhand can seem unnatural and frustrating unless you try some basic moves to get the ball over the plate. You will need a softball, a glove, a softball field, and a catcher. Optional, a batter. Step one, hold the ball in the glove at your waist, body relaxed, facing home plate 46 feet away. Touch the rubber slab on the pitcher's mound with your dominant foot. Step two, palm the ball with your thumb and little finger, gripping it with your middle three fingers supporting it. Drop the ball hand to your side. Step three, focus on the catcher's glove and step onto the rubber with your dominant foot, bending your opposite knee. Bow your back slightly. Expect the batter to hit the ball, but make it difficult for them to do it well. Step four, pull your ball hand back smoothly past your hip and behind you in a half circle as you step forward, shifting your weight over your bent back knee. Step five, plant your front foot as you fall forward, shifting your weight to the opposite side. Bend low as you sweep your arm forward and pick up speed. Step six, open your throwing hand and roll the ball off your three middle fingers. Release the ball at belt level on an arc between 10 and 13 feet high toward the plate, lifting your favored leg. Hold the ball over its top and snap the hand back to create backspin. This can cause batters to hit the ball on the ground. Step seven, follow through so your hand ends high above your head. The ball descends and crosses the line of the batter's shoulders for a strike. Square up and prepare to field. Did you know? Women first began to play softball in the 1930s. How to score RBI in baseball. Runs batted in, or RBI, is a baseball statistic useful for determining the skill level and utility of a hitter. Learn what counts as an RBI and what doesn't so you can track your favorite player's progress throughout the season. You will need a journal or scorebook. Step one. Score an RBI for the batter when a runner scores as the result of a safe hit, a sacrifice bunt, a sacrifice fly, an infield out, or a fielder's choice out. A home run scores an RBI for the batter because the run scored is a result of the batter's hit. Step 2. Score an RBI for the batter when the bases are full and the batter is awarded first base because of a base on balls, because they are hit by a pitch, or because of interference or obstruction. Step 3. Score an RBI for the batter when there is only one out and the fielding team commits an error on a play during which a runner on third base would have scored despite the error. Step 4. Don't score an RBI for the batter when a runner scores during a force double play or a reserve force double play. A reserve force double play occurs when the first runner is out by a force out and the second runner is tagged out. Step 5. Don't score an RBI for the batter when a runner scores because of an error committed by the fielding team that would have completed a force double play. Step six, score an RBI for the batter when a fielder holds the ball or throws it to the wrong base if the runner keeps going. If the runner stops and upon noticing the error starts running again, the run is scored as a fielder's choice rather than an RBI. Step seven, Score an RBI for the batter if an error is made on a play but the official scorer determines that the run would have scored regardless of the error. Step 8. Don't score an RBI for a run scored as the result of a balk. A balk is called when the pitcher commits any illegal motions during their delivery to home plate. 
When a balk is called, each runner on base moves up one base, and a runner on third base scores. Did you know? Baseballs are rubbed with mud from a secret location in New Jersey before being used in big league games. How to buy a baseball glove. Looking for the perfect glove? Here's how to get what you want. You will need a budget, a position on a baseball team, and knowledge of baseball glove materials. Optional, oils and conditioners. Step one, decide on the budget before you head out shopping. Top rate gloves can cost hundreds of dollars, so know before you go how much you can afford to spend. When shopping for a child, remember that they will grow. That super expensive glove may only fit one season. Step two, purchase a glove that is designed specifically for your position on the team. First basemen and catchers use mitts, for instance, which do not have individual fingers and have a shallow pocket to allow for easier scooping of the ball from the mitt. Step three, think of the material you'd like your glove to be. There are several different materials available, so do some research beforehand and know what you're hoping for. Treated leather gloves are highest in quality, but also come with a higher price. Make sure to find oils and conditioners specifically designed for the material your glove is made of when breaking it in. Step four, get the sizing of the glove right. Outfielders will use larger gloves, while infielders will use smaller ones. The size should be printed on the glove. Most importantly, make sure it fits your hand comfortably. Now all you need is a bat and ball. Did you know? The Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, opened on June 12, 1939. How to buy a baseball bat. If you're going to play America's pastime, you're gonna need a bat. So go get one, slugger. You will need a sporting goods store. Optional, a batting glove. Step one. If you're in a league, look up the restrictions for bats, both in material and size. Bats are usually made of wood or metal. The sweet spots are the same, but metal bats are easier to swing though they're often more expensive and banned from some leagues. Little League bats typically must be under two and a quarter inches in girth and less than 33 inches long. Step two, go to the store and pick out a few bats within your budget and size restrictions. If you wear batting gloves, take them with you to the store and put them on while handling the bats. Step three, match your height with the appropriate bat size. Though there's no hard and fast rule for matching a batter with his or her bat, there are some guidelines from which to start. Step four, kids eight to 10 should bat with a 16 or 17 ounce bat if they're under 50 inches tall. All the way up to a 20 ounce bat if you're over 60 inches tall. Step five, for 11 and 12 year olds, bats should fall between 18 to 23 ounces. Step six, for high schoolers and up, bats range from 27 to 31 ounces. Step seven, once you've selected the appropriate bat, pick it up and feel it. Take a few swings, being careful not to hit anybody or anything. Take the bat with one hand and move it around with your arm extended. If the bat is too heavy for you, you'll try and bend at your elbow rather than your wrist to move the bat around. Step eight, purchase the bat that feels the most comfortable. Take it to a batting cage and start swinging for the fences. Did you know? In 2007, New York City approved a ban on metal baseball bats for all public high school games, saying balls fly off the bats at faster, more dangerous speeds. How to calculate ERA in baseball. A pitcher's ERA, or earned run average, measures how many earned runs they allowed during a game. Learn how to calculate ERA and see if your favorite pitcher is really as strong as he seems. You will need a calculator and a basic understanding of baseball. Step one, determine the total number of innings pitched. For partially played innings, add in one third of an inning for each out recorded. For example, if a pitcher threw six full innings, then recorded one out in the seventh, he threw six and one third innings. Step two, calculate the total number of earned runs allowed. For innings where no errors occurred, this will be the total number of runs. If errors did occur, add in only the runs that would have scored had there not been an error. Remember to include earned runs that might come after the pitcher leaves the game. If a hitter gets on base against a pitcher, that runner is his responsibility, even if the pitcher has been taken out of the game. Step three, divide the total number of earned runs by the total number of innings pitched. Step four. 
multiply by nine and round this number to two decimal places to find the pitcher's ERA. For major league ball players, an ERA of four is about average and an ERA of two or less is excellent. Did you know? Ed Walsh, who played with the Chicago White Sox from 1904 to 1916, has the lowest ERA in Major League Baseball at 1.82. But the statistic is unofficial, since the American League didn't accept ERA as a statistic until 1913. 